Hello, welcome to the Friday, February 2nd, 2018 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. The South Korean CERT got a surprise for us, a new Adobe Flash zero day exploit that apparently has already been used in some targeted attacks. Attacks that were seen in Korea did deploy this particular exploit via Excel spreadsheets that included the flash file. Now other office documents would work as well and of course you could always get someone to go to a malicious website that will then launch the malicious flash file. This exploit has been used to target researchers in South Korea that deal with North Korea. Other than that, no public sightings yet. The earliest uh, references to the exploit have been found back in November. Now, Adobe has released a statement that they have a patch ready that will be deployed on Tuesday as part of the regular monthly update. So not too much really to worry about it at this point, in particular since uh, probably the one thing you should worry about is why you're still using a flash. And just as Tuesday comes along, apply the patch as it becomes available. And Xavier came across a real interesting phishing site. This phishing site sort of adapts itself to the victim. Now, typical phishing sites are trying to mimic well-known sites like Gmail or Hotmail. But in this particular case, the design of the phishing site changes depending on the domain part of the victim's email address. The link that you're clicking on if you're falling for this type of phishing site does include your email address and then it essentially just takes the domain part of the email address it then downloads logos from the respective website and displays them as part of the phishing site it also uses the first part of the domain in order to mimic a company name so in this case Xavier used isc.sans.edu as an email domain and then it inserted ISC into various parts of the page where you would expect a company name. So pretty neat and tricky. Yes, sure, it doesn't work for all companies, but probably works for enough of them and it does stand out because it's not just targeting your standard Gmail users, but really can go after a lot of smaller companies as well for which it would just be too much work for an attacker to assemble a phishing site. And a couple weeks or so ago, I mentioned how I feel how crypto mining is really replacing ransomware as the payload of choice for various exploit kits. Cisco apparently tends to agree. They just published a blog post with some of the recent crypto coin miners that they have seen, very similar to what we have been talking about over the last few months in various contexts. Now, doesn't mean that ransomware is really gone. We still see quite a bit of that, but certainly not as much of it as we probably have seen like a year or so ago. Instead, with crypto coin miners, the advantage of course is that the attacker has a higher probability to get at least some money out of a particular victim for crypto or ransomware. Of course, many victims don't pay. Now with that, there's also a little bit of move away from Bitcoin to Monero. Monero, of course, is the currency designed to be actually mined on personal computers, unlike Bitcoin, which is usually mined on special equipment. And a new Python script, autosploit.py, combines the power of Shodan and Metasploit. Essentially, what this tool sort of automates in a fairly simplistic way is that you can send a query to Shodan to receive a list of possibly vulnerable systems and then automatically run Metasploit with the appropriate exploit module against the targets. Now, before you download and start playing with this script, I 
want you to consider that I don't see an easy way here in this particular script to limit the results to a particular network as you may, for example, want to do in a penetration test, but instead it will essentially attack indiscriminately systems around the internet. So overall, an ethically very questionable uh, tool that has been deployed here. One of the pull requests for the tool actually does include a very brief and to the point ethics section for uh, the user of uh, this tool. And well, uh, this is it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.